Hey, Dr. Garrity here. In this video, I'm going to discuss three key concepts to help you understand the work of our favorite dead French philosopher, Michel Foucault. As you explore the writings and the thoughts of Foucault, keep these three concepts in mind. Sometimes you'll see them discussed in our readings, but hopefully this video helps you to make connections that can be hard to figure out on your own. So without further ado, the three concepts are power, knowledge, and self. I've made them into a triangle here so you can keep in mind that these concepts are interrelated. Now let's take a closer look at each concept. Number one, power. Think of power as a way of influencing somebody's actions. That's a pretty simple takeaway from Foucault's work. In his early work, he was interested in how power was used to control people. For example, in his seminal work, book, Discipline and Punish, he was interested in the history of the penal system and how the use of power changed over hundreds of years but was fundamentally used in the penal system by the king or government as a means of controlling prisoners or people's actions. Sports scholars have extended this idea to show how many coaches and athletes' training practices resemble the modern prison system. Not exactly a flattering metaphor, but insightful nonetheless. Now keep in mind that power is everywhere. Everybody has some power, although not in equal amounts, and it's often hard to see power in action. That is, we're often unaware of how, how our actions are being influenced. Foucault talked about power as a capillary, pumping and changing forces all the time, or as a series of magnets, each exerting a force and causing a continual and dynamic shift amongst all the other magnets. The capillary or magnet metaphor means that our knowledge and practices are subject to change, and changing how we know something, such as how to coach, or changing how we practice, can cause the actions of others to change, often in ways we didn't expect. So remember the take-home point about power. It's a relational force that influences what people think, feel, and do. Concept number two, knowledge. Knowledge takes two forms. Number one is a theoretical form, and number two is an in-action or practical form. In more familiar language to you, we can essentially take this to mean theory and practice. Theory is a form of knowledge that people, usually professors and scientists, create to make sense of people and things like the earth and matter. You may be more familiar with the sliding filament theory from biology that explains how a muscle contracts. This is a theoretical form of knowledge. It's a way of understanding muscle contraction and we see it produced in academic books and journals. Another theoretical form many undergraduate students learn in Psychology 101 is Maslow's self-actualization theory. A key point is to know that Foucault didn't think these theories were true or valid and didn't think they were false either per se. He wanted to show how these theories changed over time, and he didn't believe, as others did, that our theories became more accurate or better over time. His point was that every period throughout time believed in the rationality of their thoughts, and inevitably, these thoughts would change. Foucault referred to himself as a historian of systems of thought, which reflects his methodology. He looked at how thoughts and practices changed throughout history. He did this so he could understand how these things affected people, but a bit more on this later. The other way we understand knowledge is in practice. In practice, we have to do things, and we do things to other people. In sport, it's common that coaches tell athletes how to run or kick, or how to throw a ball, javelin, or swing a racket, and so on. We create drills and numerous techniques to use in practice. Maybe these drills are effective. Maybe not. Maybe they help us reach our intended goals. And maybe we end up with unintended consequences, too. The key point is that later in Foucault's life, he brought together the concepts and started saying, power knowledge. For Foucault, power knowledge was a way to say, you know what, I've been talking about power knowledge my whole life, but I didn't call it that until now. Power is exercised through theoretical and practical ways. Power and knowledge are always connected. We exercise power through theory and practice. Now let's move on to concept number three, the self. What was the self? Well, for Foucault, he didn't offer a theory of personality like other scholars in the sense that he didn't offer a biological interpretation of human beings, and he didn't refer to the essence of human beings like Maslow did in his theory of self-actualization. Foucault thought people were created through power and knowledge, so Foucault was interested in how power and knowledge combined to influence and create people. Foucault used the word subjectivation to refer to how people were created and controlled through predominantly powerful forces. He also used the word technologies of domination to refer to these controlling forces. Now remember, Foucault spent a lot of time studying how people's thoughts, feelings, and actions were controlled, so subjectivation wasn't a flattering phrase. Nowadays, we might think of people and in institutions such as schools, universities, political figures, the media, pop stars and celebrities, or even well-known coaches, as exerting a strong force in our social world, such that people may be unaware of these forces. Thus, we can now refer back to the earlier point on how power is often exercised as an invisible force that controls people. 
Before Foucault died, he started working on studying how people became aware of and resisted these powerful forces. He called this work Technologies of the Self, Care of the Self, or Subjectification. A subtle difference in spelling, but a major conceptual shift. Technologies of domination were ways to control people and make them subjects, whereas technology of self were ways people resisted these powerful social forces through awareness raising, critical thinking, and determining their own values, and how to minimize their domination over others. Taking these three concepts together, a take-home point is that power, knowledge, self are always interrelated. Forces are exerted and affect people, and people create knowledge and practices, and as individuals or institutions exert a force back on people. Foucault is a prolific writer, and in this video, I've only touched on these concepts, and there's more complexities involved, but I want to finish with one last thought. Foucault believed power was connected to a strategy. Strategies are used for what? To help conquer others, to make money, to provide actions, to plan. So what was Foucault's strategy? What was he really up to? Like other social theorists, Foucault was concerned with freedom. By analyzing history, he thought he could help people understand the present, and this would make them more free than they previously believed. So Foucault studied medicine, madness and rationality, science, the penal system, and sexuality, but he didn't do this to replace past theories with his own per se. He studied them to show how these theories and practices were created through relations of power, and he showed their consequences, who won, who lost, what unintended effects occurred. By studying the workings of power knowledge, Foucault thought we could change and operate in a way that was more flexible, free, and less controlling. Yet because power knowledge is constantly changing and always exists, we can never step outside of this and we need to keep engaging in this sort of critical thought. So Foucault didn't replace existing theories and practices with a new and improved model per se, he offered a new paradigm, a whole new way of looking at the social world. And this, my friends, is one reason why Foucault's work is so hard to grasp. It's what we call a paradigm shift, an entirely different way of looking at people in our world. And now, we've just about come to the end of this video. How is it that you as a person or as a coach have been influenced by dominant powerful forces that tell you how to think and practice? Maybe the rationality behind many of our current practices is severely flawed. Why do athletes still get hurt? Why is there so much conflict in the coach-athlete relationship? Can't solve a problem, but yet you're doing everything the so-called experts tell you to. It might be time to engage in your own scholarship using Foucault's concepts of power, knowledge, and the self. What will you do with this newfound freedom?